Holly here from Your Past is a Gift. So, as we were saying in the previous video, the problem with believing that happiness is over there in the future is that when you get to that point in the future, that you believed that that's where your happiness was, you get there, you've arrived, and then what? You realize that once you get to that point, there'll be another point that you need to get to because each dream that we have comes with its challenges. It's designed that way. That's what life is. There will never be a moment that you think, oh, it's going to be blissful and there's no challenges. There's no problems. Each one comes with its set of challenges and its set of problems. Each moment in your life, whether it's getting married, whether it's having children, whether it's getting a degree, whether it's going on holiday even, you know, traveling to another country, going and sitting on that mountaintop because that's where peace sits, <laughs> on that mountaintop, you know, where it's all peaceful and quiet and there's nothing else in the world but yourself. So, you know, you really need to start looking at right now, are you happy? Right now, are you happy? Or not? So simple. And that's as simple as it gets. Because until we can learn that this moment that you've got right now, that you're alive right now, is just as valuable and it's just as important as that moment that you're looking forward to. Achieving that, whatever it is, it's just as valuable. If it's because you want to get married, could it be that you don't feel complete within yourself? You think that someone else loving you and giving you all their love is going to make you feel complete. I'm good now. I feel loved. Because the truth of it is, unless you feel that love for yourself, unless you know that you're valuable and you know what you're worth and you know that you're worthy of love and that you deserve and that you are good enough, unless you know all those things, when that person comes into your life, they will be the challenges that are set for that person. That they're constantly having to prove that you're good enough. They're constantly having to prove that you're worthy. They're constantly having to prove that they love you. I've been there and I've done that and I've seen it my whole life, okay? With many different couples. That's what happens. Unless you're happy with who you are, unless you've accepted who you are, and unless you can love yourself, be kind to yourself, and talk to yourself like you're your best friend in the world, unless you can do all those things, then that person that's going to come into your life is going to have to take that on. And that's what will happen for them. They will have to be constantly proving to you that they love you, constantly proving to you that they're good enough and that you're good enough. It'll never be good enough is the problem. No matter what they do, you will not feel that they love you. I know because I've been there and I thought I was so in love when it first started. But as the relationship progressed, I realized more and more I felt like, I don't feel loved for who I am, for who I really am. I don't want to be loved for whether I had a degree or what job I was doing or for, I didn't want to be loved for any of those outer things. I wanted to be accepted and I wanted to be loved for me. But the problem was at the time, I wasn't. I wasn't accepting myself for who I was and I couldn't see the value of who I was. To anybody else. So, of course, there were always problems and there were always those challenges of, you know, I'm not good enough for you. And no matter what they did, I just wasn't good enough. And I didn't deserve their love. And it didn't matter how much they did to prove that they loved me. That wasn't enough. Because up here it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough in my head. The noise in my head wasn't letting any of that in. It wasn't accepting any of it. 
that was rejecting it all. Because how could he possibly love me for who I am? How could he possibly? All right, my darling, so I want you to think about that today, that happiness will come the moment that you accept who you are. The moment that you start talking to yourself like you're your best friend in the world. Because we don't do that. You know, we spend most, especially through our teenage years, we are just really harsh on ourselves. You know, about how we're not good enough and how we're not worthy and how we don't deserve. Ah, that noise just gets louder and louder and louder, and especially as you go into your 20s. You're just not good enough. And so we never learn to be in that place of joy, of just sitting with, I'm good with who I am today. I'm a good person. I'm good with that. I'm happy. I'm at peace. That's where I was all through my primary school years. I was happy to sit with myself. I didn't have any negative thoughts about myself at all. You know, it was wonderful. And then you go through your teen years and it all starts to catch up with you. All this chatter that had been going on for years and years and years, you know, that you hear from all the grown-ups around you, it all catches up with you. And then that, those patterns start to repeat in your head and all of a sudden, they're your patterns. They're no longer the adults' patterns that were around you, the grown-ups, they're now, they've now become your patterns. And so, you know, you have to stop and think to yourself, well, that's not mine. I can put that down now. <laughs> you know, that was yours. That was your problem. That was your issue. Not mine. That's not me. That's not who I am. And I believe, and I've always been told that I'm so naive for believing, but I believe that there is good in everybody. There is good. There's both. There's the good and there's the bad. We all have that capacity. But even in the worst people, you know, I can always find the good in them, the good things that they've done, the good, the good, because it's there, always. I believe that, hiding underneath all that, you know how they <laughs> interact with the world and how they treat others and how they want others to think that they're horrible, stay away. Underneath all that, there is a good heart. There's a little soul that's just frightened. It's too scared to interact with the world and that's why it's all, no, leave me alone. Too scared. But it's there. It's there. I know it's there. And you can be the one today to start talking to that little soul with a little bit of love. Don't be frightened anymore. You have this life to live. You know? What have you got to lose? The day you're going to die is the day you're going to die. That could be tomorrow. You don't know. I don't know. You know, I've been in hospital twice and I could have sworn that was the end of my line. Both times. I was in hospital for two weeks and I could have sworn that was it for me. I wasn't coming back. But I'm still here. You don't know when it's your time. So, make the most of it. Make the most of it. At least treat yourself with kindness and with love. Treat yourself the way you'd like others to treat you. And then that will start to show up for you. Start talking to yourself the way you would like others to talk to you. And that will show up for you. Alright my darlings? But at least... You yourself treat yourself with some love and dignity and respect and kindness. All right, my sweethearts, I love you guys. Remember to click like and subscribe below so you don't miss any of the messages. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.